Welcome to Look Designer Quick Start Guide. In this short video, I would like to introduce you to Look Designer. I'd like to explain you how it works and how you can get most out of it. And hopefully in a very short amount of time, get you going so you can also start making some amazing looks. First of all, what we need to understand is that under the hub, Look Designer is made so to emulate the process we used to do to create looks back in the days when we used to capture it on film. So just to remind ourselves, the way how we used to work was that we would you know, take a film camera and put the film negative into it. We would capture you know, images with that film negative, then send it into laboratory for processing. Then that film negative would then get printed to a film print that would then get sent to a cinema and then would get projected. So basically what we did is we have taken that process and just adapted it to the digital workflow that we use today. So what you're going to have to do with the look designer first is you're going to have to select something which is called a camera profile which adapts your digital camera that you are using to look designer's image processing pipeline. Then you're going to have to apply to that camera particular negative stock that you're going to be using. And then you're going to have to print that stock to the print film. And combination between those two elements, negative and print, are going to give you that very specific look that people get out of the look designer, which is the reason why they love look designer so much. Then at the end, we have to output that particular look in uh, any format of our choice, because today we don't just project films on a film in cinema, we actually have to output it to the variety of devices, like, you know, cinema screens or like internet or, you know, your HDR monitor for Netflix, for Amazon, for HBO. So there is a variety of options. And Look Designer is so flexible that allows you to adapt the same look that you created for many of different screens. This is the principle on which Look Designer was built on, but you know, through the years of development and user feedback, we have added a few more features that are improving its functionality further. So let's look into this, what they are. First, we have something called Gamut Limit, which is there to help us um, solve some issues that we have with cameras with a very wide gamut or when we are filming neon lights. Then we have a standard lift cam again as a great tool to further refine and adjust our image. Then we have a temperature dial that helps us get our image very photometrically accurate results as if we were scanning using different light sources. And then this is one of those tools that everybody you know, seems to be loving and talking about, which is called subtractive color. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper about it. Basically, it emulates how film emulsions work and you're able to blend and recreate or create your own types of film emulsion that you're going to use for that particular look. There is an unavoidable push and pull dial that is going to help you justify for you know, subtractive changes and saturation. And that also works kind of in combination with everything else. At the end, we have added something called post-process and that emulates uh, processing that we used to do in film laboratories and when we used to process film in, during printing process in a very specific way to give it a particular look we wanted. If you are interested in uh, following this tutorial together with me, um, then uh, you can download the same footage that I will be using and uh, you can find the link to this footage in the uh, installation PDF that came with the installation file for Look Designer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all of those files on a timeline and I'm going to move into a color page and then I'm going to open another serial node. We always try to put look designer on node number two and then to quickly find it you can just type inside your OFX panel look and then kind of you filter it out and there you go this is the look designer 2.3 that i'm using at the moment just drag it and drop it onto node number two and then the panel opens here on the right 
So here you're going to recognize all those settings that um, we were talking about. So basically here, you know, you can select your cameras and you know, not just the cameras, we can work in ACES or we can work in, uh, you know, DaVinci Resolve Wide Gamut in further tutorials. I'm going to go a little bit deeper on all of those options. Our camera that we're using at the moment is red. So I'm going to be using profile called red IPP2 wide gamut RGB log 3 G10 and the output profile is automatically selected to 7 and 9 but just to show you there is plenty of options here where I can output to various other color spaces or display devices. Okay so let's go ahead and start creating our first look and since I know that this look is going to be based on film emulation what I'm going to do first is I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom I'm going to click on post process and I'm going to enable post-processing and in our case, I'm going to select FPE option, which stands for film print emulation. What this does, it puts my image into a gamut that is actually very close or very accurate to actual film gamut. So the results I'm going to be getting, are going to be very, you know, photometrically accurate to what really film looked like. So I'm going to put the value of FPE to around 08. This is a good starting point for that. Okay, the next thing that I need to do then is I need to select the negative that I'm going to be filming on. So let's click here on the negative stock in negative options. And then I have a variety of options here from different Fuji negatives, even Agfa negative here and different Kodak stocks. So basically this is probably the largest selection of different negative stocks that you can find out there. And what is very interesting really is that each one of these negative stocks doesn't really influence your exposure values at all. They are really, uh, you know, controlled by your camera, by your exposure. And the negative is just giving you the characteristic, the color characteristic that you are normally getting, you know, from shooting on that negative stock. So you see, for example, I have selected you know, this particular stock, which is called 5203 Vision 350D. I can quickly bypass it to see what it does. I can maybe increase its intensity like this as well. You know, so if I want to, I can get more of that kind of negative color in there. And you know, with bypass, I can see before and after. I quite like this look. It gives me like a beautiful, you know, blue skies. And, and you know, I like the kind of what it does really to the ground as well. All right, so the next option for us is gonna to be to go and create a print because this is really where, you know, looks happen, you know, like, so this is really when we start getting very creative. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cr create the first a contrast. So basically with print, we have improved it further. Instead of just selecting it like we did it with negative, just to one kind of setting, we have separated those two settings into contrast and print stock. And they are independent and they just give you more variety and more options. So for example, I have an S contrast, which gives you like a, an interesting kind of S shape curve. And then here with the intensity slider, you can decide, you know, how much contrast of that you want to add to it. And then you have F curves, which are really film curves. So basically they're sampled film stock that kind of allows you to, you know, you know, explore to what would, you know, this particular shot look like if it was to be printed on different film stocks. So for example, I can say, well, you know, like I like this kind of F3, but in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to be very accurate to kind of printing it on an actual film stock. So I'm going to print it on a Kodak 2383, but now I have only selected the contrast profile of that particular film stock. The next thing I need to do, I need to then go onto my print stock uh, settings and I need to then add the color element to it. And then you, as you can see, I have options to go 2393, 83, Fuji positive print, Eterna as well is here. And this is a generic stock that we created based on you know, our wishes to what the film stock could look like. So now I'm going to go to Kodak Vision Color Print 2383. And as you can see straight away, you know, we got that very familiar kind of film stock emulation look. And with my kind of, you know, intensity dial, I can see how much of that do I want, how much, you know, like of this particular intensity I want to have. And this is just a beautiful, you know, little way how I can tweak and balance my looks further. This is already fantastic and we got an amazing look, but actually, 
here, we want to take it to the next step. And this is something that is very unique to this application and it is called subtractive color. Okay, subtractive color allows you to, you know, modify how your film has been responding to the light and how the emulsion layers have been capturing color. Let me show you what it means. First, I'm going to increase just a little bit the CMY and I recommend you always use, you know, kind of, you know, dials here on the numbers because you just click with your mouse and move it left and right because that way you have a more precision and you need a lot of precision for these adjustments. So basically, I'm going to just increase the general CMY kind of just to switch it on. And then I'm going to basically use cyan and magenta and yellow to kind of create a little disbalance and, and, and that exactly that disbalance is what makes it very interesting, you know, how you blend colors in a very unique way, you know, using CMY like as a primary colors to get to that really very interesting look, you know, and, and, and that is really something that is very, very specific that many people like. However, as we are increasing, you know, our layer density effectively, we are capturing more light, but also we are basically, you know, making image darker. And at the same time, we're making image more saturated. And this is complete opposite to what normally happens when we are grading in RGB world. Okay, so this is very specific effect that we get on film. Why film looks so good in shadows and why it has a desaturated shadows is because the darker the image, the more saturated it is because light has to go through more dense layers. And because of that effect, what we need to do is we need to go into push and pull and correct our exposure loss that we got through increase of that density. So with push and pull, I'm just going to go and bring back some of that you know, exposure that I lost. And now I'm kind of, you know, feeling like, okay, I have got to the tonality I want and I have, you know, brought my exposure to the level I want, but at the same time, I have definitely managed to increase some of my saturation, as you can see here. And that is very, very, you know, interesting effect that it's gonna give you an, and that really helps digital cameras feel and look a little bit more analog. So what I can do then is I can go into temperature, and on temperature, I can decide whether I want this image to be a little bit cooler, right? You know, or a little bit warmer, you know, that's up to me, like, you know, how I feel like in the diet. I'm going to just, you know, cool it down just a little bit to get it back to like a more neutral balance like this. And if I want, I can then tweak my saturation to decide, you know, how rich or how less rich I want this image to be. And there we go. Now we got basically our first absolutely wonderful looking film print emulation look that is combining, you know, Kodak and in negative and Kodak in print with our own, you know, way of, you know, dealing with, with uh, emulsion layers, uh, saturation, temperature. So you are really, really taking this whole look design beyond just applying some sort of film emulation light. You are the designer, you are the person, you know, who has the control. If you're happy with this, you can just right mouse click and say grab still. So basically you can then reuse this look further or you have options to click onto the export LUT, you know, and you can then make a 33 point LUT that you can use on set, in cameras and display devices, or you can export 65 point LUT that is recommended for post-production. I hope uh, this gives you an idea to how quickly and easy you can create most amazing looks with a look designer. And if you're interested in exploring it further, uh, take a look at some more tutorials on our website.